folks, what a treat to be with you. There's good news and bad news here today. The bad news is I'm uh, feeling sick, got a little bit of a head cold, or perhaps the disease that should not be named. And just in case, I'm taking all precautions. You know, we all have our little homespun remedies for this and that. You know, uh, some folks uh, recommend drinking bleach. I do not. I hang out with cool people and talking about math on, on YouTube together. So that's what I'm doing to keep myself uh, healthy and uh, sane. And the good news is you want to hear me and my voice for much longer today because uh, I'm uh, just today is just stacked with fantastic guests sharing fantastic things. Um, the uh, the agenda here today is that we'll have a uh, new collection, a new activity starter screen collection is going to drop here. And then we've also got a new feature, a new set of features that we're going to preview. And these are not available yet. You'll have, you'll have the, uh, the ability exclusive to here who are actually live versus watching the replay to play around with this new feature. But it's not going to be available quite yet. We're still tuning up a few things, but it's going to blow minds. And uh, then finally, we have Suzanne Vonoy here for a feature that we like to call for the first time, Secrets of the Graph Team Revealed. So give it up to each other in the chat, give a thumbs up, say what's up to one another. Um, again, uh, my name is Dan Meyer and I'm just super pumped to be here with you folks on Desmos Live. So here's the deal, I asked you folks in the chat, what is, um, rather let me jump jump, and uh, let's do the business with the um, this fun new feature, uh, new activity rather. So on our starter screens uh, collection at teacher desmos.com we've added a new one we got these screens for checking in for social emotional check-ins um some remixing some whiteboards we uh not not long ago on desmos live we released um data collection screens and here today um exclusive 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 to you folks we are announcing random generators so you, you go um to that activity and you know how it works you can um grab for yourself uh click any of these screens right here click that uh this dice Roll that thing, got some auto dice rollers. You can just press your copy shortcut, head over into your own activity, paste that in there. Um, you've got your own dice now, they're yours. You can jump in there and customize them in the computation layer script. I just want three dice, you know, three dice is all I want. I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, not greedy here. So now I've got uh, three dice right there. These are gonna be fantastic for you folks doing some, um, doing your, you know, uh, probability exercises, statistics, uh, you know, we're, we're coming after you, Rossman Chance, watch your backs. And uh, anyway, I just wanna make these for you folks and make life a little bit easier. So head to the starter screen collection. This will be in the show notes here on YouTube um, shortly and grab any of these, uh, gosh, this, this got a spinner going for you folks. Look out for that. Randomized spinner, get those random numbers in a fun and fancy way. Cool stuff. Anyway, just wanna drop that for you folks here, exclusive right away. I asked you folks what the, um, the most uh, the most common feature request was uh, the longest running feature request at Desmos history. Lots of folks saying things that are uh, related to activities. And the fact is, is we've had the same feature request since long before activities, since um, just having a, uh, before our matrix calculator, before our geometry tool, when we just had a graphing calculator back when it was written in uh, HTML 1.0 plus a bunch of flash, we still had the same uh, the same exact feature request. What do you think it was? Whoa, hold on. Uh -huh. What do you think it was? Uh, you'll never guess. I'm I'm pulling up some tweets. Hold on, some tweets right here. And uh, yeah, anyway, people are just all have been asking us for the longest time, perhaps to make the flag of Kurdistan. They've been wanting um, they've been wanting the color yellow. And so here's the deal. Today, uh, for the first time ever, uh, in sanctioned ways, you'll be able to create yellow in Desmos. I'm gonna uh, invite a couple of colleagues on to share how to do that. Um, but more than how to do yellow, how to uh, just like really just tune your graphs way, way up um, with colors and styling. It's all happening here right now. We did a demo at Desmos HQ uh, earlier today and people's minds were blown. Hope the same is true for you. And we'll also share with you why we haven't been so keen on adding yellow as an easy color option. Not because we are mean or unkind. You folks know us better than that. Uh, we had some good reasons for that. So uh, please welcome um, to Desmos Live, making their Desmos Live debuts. We've got uh, straight from uh, Columbia, Sebastian Mora, uh, coming on to the to Desmos Live, one of our, our illustrators and designers, and then Chris Lusto, one of our engineers also coming on to share with you what is up, what we're um, doing with advanced styling here today. So I'm gonna um, turn it over to them with the screen share. Let them know what's up, Chris and Sebastian. Give them a, give them a welcome here, uh, folks in the chat. Thank you, thank you for the warm welcome, uh, Mr. Meyer. And the, uh, I'm I'm a little I'm a little sad that some people in the chat seem to guess. Uh, you can't tell people are going to blow their minds at Desmos without them automatically thinking we're going to give them yellow. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to start off with a, a short demo, which is similar to what we uh, demoed at, at work today. We've been working on this for the last few weeks, 
and uh, and then I'll turn it over to Sebastian to talk a little bit more about colors specifically. But uh, I was going to end I was going to end with colors as the as the sort of reveal, but it's been revealed. Um, so let me just start off with a couple small uh, like quality of life improvements. Uh, I pulled this graph off of the Desmos uh, subreddit, which is a great place to find complicated graphs. Um, this one's not too bad, but you know we have a whole bunch of expressions, and I'm sure you've been in situations where you had graphs with many expressions. And uh, here we have a Poincaré disk, and so you're like, I know somewhere there's a variable called disk, and I want to do something with it, but I'm not sure where it is. Uh, so now if you're focused in the expressions list and you hit Command F or Control F, a little search bar will pop up. And I can type in what I'm looking for and see like, oh, here are the two expressions that contain the variable um, that I was searching for. So out of all those expressions, it'll search through your folders, it'll search through everything, and it'll just filter down to exactly um, what you're looking for. So that way you can make those edits in the one or two places where it matters. And then you can go back to looking at the whole expressions list. Uh, the graph team's going to love this. They make the most complicated graphs of anybody I know. Um, another small kind of quality of life imp improvement uh, for interactions is we made it easier to make draggable images without a bunch of the annoying UI that you don't always want when you have draggable images. So this is my standard uh, kitty cat image that I use uh, for all my bug reports and testing. And you see when you click the image, um, you know, you get like these pull points and the center to, uh, to resize and move the image around. But that's not always what you want. Sometimes you want this thing to behave more just like a clickable, draggable thing, like a drag target. And so we've given you a way to make the image draggable, and it does a couple of nice things for you. It'll render Chris, the let me image jump in without. Here fast, actually. Oh, sorry. Hey, Chris, I'm missing the left part of your screen on the screen share. If you if you pull the, your window bounds inwards, this is uh, <laughs> we should have tested this out. I apologize, folks. If you drag your window bounds inwards, I'm wondering if it if it brings me the full screen here. Are you? Uh, maybe. Mm, 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 no. I'm only I'm sharing the tab, so I think Ecam is doing whatever it wants to do with the there tab. There we go. There we go. There is that we go. a bit yeah, better? For real. Yep. 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 Uh, that's oh, I'm so cool. sorry, you guys. Okay. No, it's cool. We, is that we better? Most of the, most of the search there, but show us how you did that draggable one more time. Cool. Yeah. Um, let me. When I uh, when I drag my uh, I have the the kitty image that I use for everything. Um, you get these pull points. You get the center, and like this is the the image interaction you're familiar with from Desmos. But if you want this thing to be behave more like just a draggable thing that you want to move around and you don't care about resizing, you're not concerned about seeing the, the control points, um, we give you with one click. We'll make a new point for you. We'll hide it. We'll make it the center of your image. And we won't render that image dragging UI so you can make this thing just behave like a, like a drag and drop type thing. Um, so those are the two kind of small improvements that are little ergonomic niceties. Um, Small. But the cool stuff that we demo. Give it up in the chat for that. Give it I up. Come on, come <laughs> on, please. I mean, cats alone. Cats is a as a primitive cats. in Desmos. Awesome. Yes. Plus symbol of Every cats. bug report. Good. Keep going. Every bug report I've ever filed has had this cat image. Um so yeah, uh, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna show the, the new styling stuff by going back to a graph that I made a long time ago for Twitter, um, which is kind of cool. Like I it it's one of my favorite little short graphs. Um you can watch this for a long time and it makes some neat patterns. And I think I made a GIF at some point and, and we, we laughed about it on Twitter. Um, but it's not the greatest, like it could be better. And we have a bunch of new ways to make things pop. So um, first thing, uh, the points are kind of small. So uh, you'll notice now if I go into our new styling menu, um, I have some new options. Uh, in addition to the stuff you used to be able to do, like connecting dots and selecting line styles, you'll see that now we have some inputs for opacity and size. So you can start putting in things like, maybe I want these points to be twice as big as they were, or maybe like three times as big as they were, or maybe like, I'm not sure how big I want them to be, so uh, we'll make them a slider, like we do in Desmos. Uh, and now I can play around with it until I get the size uh, that I want. So you get computed properties and you get dynamic computed properties for uh, things like style, things like opacity. Um, also pay attention, I'm gonna do something cool here, which is subtle, subtle. I'm gonna call this thing P for opacity and I'm gonna click my slider. And you'll notice that because we knew it came from an opacity input, we set the defaults from zero to one. 
Um, so we have new context aware sliders in a bunch of situations so that you don't have to guess or fiddle with parameters in a bunch of situations where there are compounds that you want. So we know it's capacity, we'll give you from zero to one and you don't have to mess with it. Um, so that's pretty neat. I, it could be cooler though. Like what I could do is I could change the opacity so that like rather than just have one opacity, like let's scale it by my list. So I'll do L divided by 12. And that will broadcast that opacity um, over the list of stuff. So you'll see like my first point is 1 12th opacity. My last point is 12 12th opacity. And so um, now you can make like this cool kind of gradient effect. So you can do that with our with a bunch of new properties. I'm gonna skip, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna take too long. So I'm gonna skip right to the color stuff. There's, there's a few other neat things. You can do label rotation. We have some other cool properties you can change, but it's all the same sort of idea. Um, dynamic numbers and dynamic lists. Two new ways to make colors in Desmos. One new way, two new functions. Um, let me get rid of this here. We have two new functions called, sorry. Two new functions called RGB and um, HSB, which Sebastian's gonna talk a little bit about then, but. Um, RGB takes a red, green, and blue component and makes a new color. So if you've ever used any kind of like web color tool, lots of illustrator type tools use RGB. Um, and I'm gonna make sliders for these, because why not? And again, if you don't remember like what these values should be, they go from zero to 255, but you don't have to remember that. You click the button and you'll get context aware sliders that'll show you what your bounds should be. And now you'll notice as I drag this around, I get a little color swatch here. Um, and if I name this color, let's call it C. When I go back up into my expression, I have a new color swatch, not just I have my beautiful Desmos six colors, um, but I also have this nifty one. And again, it updates dynamically. So I can, I can make stuff that has dynamic color. Let's make it, let's make yellow. Why not? I don't know. What's, what's yellow? What's an ugly yellow, like a bunch of red, uh, some, some green, like maybe we'll dial back the blue a little bit. There we go, that's, that's pretty hideous yellow. Um, RGB is dumb though. Uh, RGB is not fun to work with, so we'll, we'll do HSV, um, which is huge saturation value. And again, you don't have to remember what these parameters are, we'll give you the right bounce. Um, the hue goes from zero to 360, and then saturation and value are like lightness and brightness. So again, let me name that thing. Uh, oh yeah, cool. And now we can can play play this around a little bit. Let me dial. Let me let me pick. We'll pick something in the in the reddish family, and we'll dial up the brightness a bit. Um, final trick. Uh, also, lists work with colors the same way we do with other styles. So if I change rather than have um, H here be a value, be a single value, um, let's make it go uh, from like one. Uh, to, or let's let's do uh, 12, 24, 24. Let's make a bunch. Um, so yeah, now you'll see my my little color swatch is a gradient in my list, and we actually will broadcast that set of colors over the points. So yeah, so you can do cool stuff like make color gradients and opacity gradients and thickness gradients and. Uh, have it all respond to dynamically to parameters in the graph. So not only can you have yellow, you can have like all the yellows you can represent on a computer screen basically. So I don't ever want to hear another tweet. I don't ever want to see it. I don't ever want to hear another complaint about yellow. It is all up to you now. And Sebastian is going to talk about why you should wield that power carefully. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Um, before that, I just wanted to share a little bit about HSV because it's my favorite way of dealing with color. Uh, and for folks who are not familiar with it. So like basically um, to think about those tools, uh, if you're thinking about hue, it's usually the colors of the rainbow. So like red, uh, yellow, green, blue, purple, and pink, I think. Um, so think about going through those um, different colors. And then S, it's for saturation. So it's pretty much how bright your color is or how uh, dull. And then the value, it's pretty much how much black and white it has, so how dark it is. 
Um, so that way you can control a little bit better your colors as you work with this. Um, and so to answer the question that everybody's asking and has been asking for a while, why we don't have yellow as the in our default colors. Um, and still we don't have it in our default colors. Um, so accessibility is the big reason, visual accessibility. And so we want to make our tools and our colors and our activities uh, as accessible as possible. And to make them right, we follow different requirements. Uh, having in mind people with different visual, vision impairments. And the key with working with color is contrast. So like when you have two colors right next to each other and compare them, um, they need to be like different enough so that people with different uh, color perceptions can still tell one is different from the other. And unfortunately, uh, yellow, it's the brightest color in the hue. And so it's super, super close to white. Uh, we have white as the default background color in our graph. Um, and so if you use yellow over white, it's gonna be too bright. It's gonna be, it's gonna have a low contrast and it's gonna be, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna show to a lot of folks. So. We want a lot of people to be able to interact and use our tools and especially to see all the amazing work that you create uh, in the graphing calculator. So um, if you want to use uh, yellow still, I suggest using it uh, on top of a darker color. Uh, if it's black or any other sort of dark color, purple works great as well. Uh, so start playing with those colors so that um, we won't have any accessibility issues and your graphs could go anywhere and everybody could see them. Uh, please, folks in the chat, give it up uh, for not just Sebastian and Chris, but everyone working so hard to make sure that you folks and your students can have ultra powerful graphing experiences, not, not just powerful, but highly usable as well. Anyone, anyone can staple on new features to uh, the old user interface, but we're trying to tune this thing up so it's all even easier than it was uh, before uh, and more powerful. So thanks loads, Sebastian and Chris, for coming online on Desmos Live and sharing, uh, just sharing the awesomeness. Give it up, folks, in the chat. So uh, coming up uh, in our next segment here, I just wanna start by um, sharing with you this, this screen from a uh, currently unreleased activity called Dino Pops. And how it works is this is, I'm um, got Dino Pop there. If I type in three and six, now it's gonna be different. So I make a new box. I make a, a box that say a 10 uh, in width and I'm gonna make it six in height and watch what happens here. Here's my box and uh, the Dino Pop is not gonna fit in the box. And I've gotta try this again. And the idea is that like, okay, so I needed to make this thing um, a little bit larger maybe. Here it is, okay. Uh, getting a little bit better. And now I start to realize that, okay, there's this like proportionality going on here where it needs to be, it, the height is twice the width here, so this should be 20. And what I wanna call out is this, is that there's loads of enthusiasm on um, on Facebook and our support channels for computation layer help. And what computation layer does is it sends these numbers from the table over into the graph, which is no joke. I mean, it's a serious skill there. It creates these, computation layer creates these connected um, connections between components and screens in our activities, which helps students see their thinking in different ways. But the question is, what are you connecting that thinking to? So one thing we could do is just connect um, the, the students numbers here, their, their dimensions to a right or wrong evaluator where it's like, nah, this is right, this is wrong. But what we try to do in our activities is, is send back to the student some other representation of their thoughts beyond right or wrong and just say, hey, here is how we are thinking about your ideas. What you gave to us, we're gonna send this back to you and see what you do with it. And that takes place not in computation layer, but in graphs. And so this graph right here, this dino pop thing, this is all created in a graph. And um, the numbers go in from the table, but what happens next is all in the graph. And that's that's a serious skill right there. And to um, to help you folks learn how to tune up activities in that way, I want to bring on a colleague, graph team specialist, Suzanne Von Oy on the Desmos Live, making her debut. Um, say what's up to him, Suzanne. How are you doing out there? Hey, how's it going? We are doing fantastic. Uh, yeah. We, we're doing great. Good. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Our audio might be a little goofy. We'll see how this goes. Um, <laughs> Suzanne, tell, tell them what you wanted to be when you uh, were a kid. 
All right. Well, when I was a kid, my dream job was to be a Disney animator. Um, turns out that I ended up animating for an even better company than Disney. Than Disney. So, uh, yeah. Who knew that my dream job as a child would be what I do every day? So, yeah, an animator uh, was the dream, and then you wound up making some just delightful, slick animations here at Desmos. Um, I, th I think it's really the most appropriate thing we should do right now is to uh, drop live for the first time ever the Suzanne Vonoy fan cam, folks. Let's do it. Get to know her. Get to know the work. Fan cam season. That's all graph. Oh my gosh. That's, every bit of that is a graph right there. That's so wild. All right. Oh, Suzanne's got some that. time here. We might run a little bit past our usual 30 minutes, uh, just a little past that. But let's uh, let's give them, give them a 10 or so minutes of some, some uh, tutorial on how to make some just fantastic, delightful animations that send information back to students that'll provoke more thinking uh, versus shutting it down with just a straight right or wrong. Over to you, Suzanne. Sweet. So I think uh, the biggest thing is to do animations, you're you're making things move in real time. Um, so I'm gonna, I've kind of stripped down this Dino Pops uh, graph here, and uh, you'll just kind of see the stripped down version here. We're going to take a look inside um, and see how these mechanics are happening. And what I'll say is about a year and a half ago on the graph team, we sort of switched how we think about making animations happen, um, in large part because to this switch kind of freed up our minds to think about the bigger picture of what we wanted the animation to do instead of the, the tiny little details about how to actually make it happen. So um, we kind of developed this thing that we call animation timers, but it's really a misnomer, Dan, because uh, I would say it's more like a, um, a percentage, an animation percentage. So I'm gonna click play here while we're in the graph and I want you to just watch these four numbers right here. Um, in fact, let me let me see how fast this is going. Yeah, so this is kind of slowed down, but you can see this is counting up from zero to one, zero to one over here, zero to one over here, and each time we're counting up from zero to one, that's a different part of the animation, right? Um, so we've kind of like pared down what an animation is to just percentages. We say we've got this like time frame where we want to go from zero percent of the animation done to one hundred percent of that animation. Um, and we can open up some things and right in here, I have a, just a few calculations. Um, there's only a few things that actually need animating in this stripped down version. Uh, we need to know where the box is at any time. It starts way out to the right at 15. And as this variable goes from zero to one, uh, we're traveling left 15, starting at none of this value and then zooming up to all of the minus 15. And then uh, for the rollout, once we get to that timer, counting up from zero to one, and I'll just get rid of a few of these here. Uh, yeah, then, then we're subtracting 15 again to move off the screen. Okay. Same thing goes for the Y coordinate of the lollipop. Uh, we're starting way up high, and then as this goes from zero to one, this whole term ends up dropping out. Hang on, hang on, let me see if I got this here. So each of those sure. like subscripty variable things, all those are, yep. they run from zero to one. As that yep. T not goes, they're the different timing. They go from zero to one. So like that X, go, go back down here. So that uh, oh, sure, sure, sure. the X coordinate, a little small on my screen here, whatever is cool. Um, it's going to start at 15 and then, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Uh-huh. Thank you. And then as a roll in goes from zero to one, mm -hmm. it comes in more. And then as a mm -hmm. rollout goes from zero to one, it subtracts off even more, sending it off the screen. Is that right? Yep. That's okay. exactly what it's doing. Yep. I can follow that. Matt. Uh, so, so how do you get the, how do you get those timers to move from zero to like, it's just wild to me that zero to one is just a powerful, like a 0%, hundred percent. And that controls so much there. So how do you make that happen? Yeah, totally. So um, it turns out that the way that we started making this happen and we've since moved a little bit past that, but uh, the, the most powerful function that we have is the median function, uh, which we usually think of in terms of cent measures of central tendency. But uh, in this case, we're thinking of it as the middle value of these three functions. So we've got y equals one, 
got y equals zero, we've got uh, y equals x. And at any given point, only one of those three things is in the center, right? So this is the one in the middle right now, here's the one in the middle right now, and here's the one in the middle right now, right? And so uh, by taking the median of these three pretty simple functions, now we've got a function that just stays at zero, suddenly goes up to one, and stays at one for as long as we want it to. Uh, yeah, so what do you think, Dan? Should we try to make some animation timers? Okay, yeah, let's do it. So show, show, show the median function. Let's see here, yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, well, that's here, beautiful. Here's the median function. Yeah, but the, it's just, um, it's... But zoom in on that right there, that that A anime right there. And I gotta say, this is, yeah. this is so Suzanne's dropping secrets right here. I hope you appreciate this. Um, you know, sh there's a there's kind of the the Omerta code uh, among Desmos graph specialists. Like, typically we'd have Suzanne in some kind of you know a, a mask or with some kind of voice distortion technology. I'm just hoping that folks are cool <laughs> with her dropping all this. But that's wild to me. This median function here, it's like okay, let's look at zero and one and t, and whichever one is in the middle at a given moment. I've only I've used median to like find the middle number of a list, but this is like yeah. we'll always keep zero at first and then t then one depending all right let's let's keep it going here i dig it okay so so dan i think a lot of the teachers that are that are hanging out with us tonight are probably familiar with uh function transformations and that's what we use a lot to to make these things happen for example if i say y equals should i zoom in a little bit again i'll just let me do this yeah bring this over where we can see it how's that can we see that okay yeah great uh so if i do y equals animate of x, that's gonna just look exactly like animate of t. But if I do x minus one, I've now shifted this over a little bit, right? And if I do minus two, this, this is just your classic shift. Um, and this is how we get things to start at different times, okay? And in a second, we're gonna actually put this t zero in, uh, which is gonna allow us to actually make things that have changing values. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that you can also um, change how long it takes to go from zero to one, right? By dividing by something. How, how long do you want it, Dan? What do you think? Uh, three seconds. Three seconds. You got it. Okay. We're nice. going to make our very first animation time. Are you ready for this? I'm just going to call it like uh, a one. How's that? First animation. It's going to start two seconds in. It's going to take three seconds long. Okay. Uh, so let, let's kind of hit play here and see this happen. There it goes. There it goes. Started Boom. at two seconds, three seconds took exactly. three seconds yep. to last, and now it's at one, and it won't do any more past that. Yeah, no. all right. All right. You want to make a couple some... of others real quick? Let's do two. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's, 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 let's start one that like starts at, like it starts right away, like right when T0 okay. starts, and mm -hmm. it takes two seconds to finish, so the, it'll finish right when the next one starts. I'm kind of going, going out of order here. Love it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what? Let's why get, don't we? Why don't yeah, we like let's, let's switch around. Shift yeah. these around. First okay, one. A one, A two. Thank you, thank you. Love okay, it. and then let's do a fast one that starts right after that last one. So if I got this right, A three equals animate. Um, so like five times quantity t zero uh, minus three or hold up minus five. Minus five. Start at five, and and you're gonna multiply it by five, so it goes really fast. It goes fast, yeah. Is that cool? Yeah, totally. And you know okay. what? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do you one better, and just say I want it to take exactly 0. 0.2 seconds. Oh, all right, all right. So yeah. so multiplying by five is gonna have the same effect as dividing by 0. 0.2. But I, I like to throw it down here in the denominator because to me straight. visually it's a lot clearer about what we're doing. So um, yeah, we got a few timers. Should we just watch them count up real quick? Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll just watch them count up. Yeah, here we go. Okay. That one? Next one starts, goes slow. Next one starts and goes fast. Boom. Real All right, fast. Let's make someone move. Let's okay. do it. All right. Now, uh, let me just actually zoom us out a little bit here again because I have um, our little friend, Mr. Dino Pop, here. Okay. So yeah. I think we should make Mr. Dino Pop actually uh, do a few things. So the chat got real sure. quiet. I think everyone just died in the chat. Let's let's uh, let's let's assume they're still there and just like suffering from okay. uh, Sounds stroke, good. surprise stroke. And let's do it here. So okay. what can you move? So we we can do anything we want. We've got a center, we can move it to the right, to the left, we could make it larger, smaller, we could spin it around. Let's spin it around at some point. Yes. Yeah. Let's do a horizontal uh, motion first, all right. I feel like I feel like horizontal motion just like makes a ton of sense. 
You know what I'm saying? Totally. Like, it just we, we saw it already yeah. for the Dino Pop originally. So let's just like let's drop that in. How do you make this? How do you put that in the center? Okay, make it work. Let's just move it right by like four units. What do you think? But it not right up, away. Though. We want to do it over the course of like none of it, all of it. Okay. Hold up. That's that's the vertical, right? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Just checking myself here. Okay. So, I did that to check me, totally Thank you. Can you can I pause here? So when when, yep. when you start the timer, it's going to go from zero to one. So it starts at zero zero, and when a one becomes one, it's going to be four zero. So yeah, all it's going to happen is to move from zero zero to four zero. And what you've mm -hmm. done is changed the timing when it starts yep. and how fast it goes. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly awesome. what we're doing. Can yep. we see it? I don't. I don't uh, yeah, totally. Here. Let's do it. Let's hit play. Okay. And that's all. And it stops. Do we have A2 do Let's something? Let's do A2 and A3. Let's ask the chat. All right. Chatty folks, what do you want to do with A2 and A3? What should we move around here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer for the chat. You know, let's do let's do angle okay. and ooh and opacity. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like flip this thing around a couple times. What do you think? Zoom it, zoom it in for us. All right. Zoom it in for us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 720 times that? A2. So A2 starts late and goes slow. And it's going to go yeah. all the way to, it's going to do two full rotations. Hit them with the opacity yeah. now. Let's make it, um, let's make it fade out. So if it fades out, okay. we don't want to do just times A3, right? Because that's going to go from mm -hmm. zero to one. We want to go from one to zero. So we got to do the quantity one minus A3. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. exactly it. Because I as it. A, when A is zero, this whole thing is going to equal one, right? And by the time A gets to one, this whole thing's going to equal zero. So that's kind of how we reverse going from 100% of something to nothing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, are you ready for this? I don't know if I'm ready. The chat's definitely not ready. <laughs> People are losing their mind on what you're Let's up to see. right here. Spin it. Spin it. Boom. Yeah, and Ooh, it I don't like it, though. I don't like it, though. I don't like how fast that faded out. It looked like it just dis disappeared. Okay. I, I was wrong. Let's, I wanted to do. Like, Change the point to maybe the, like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, and let, let's just pause for a minute afterwards. Let's just like give it a little pause. Oh, so you changed that 5.5. .5. You added a half second pause. Is that what you did? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I like right. a good All little right. pause. Yeah. Spin it. Spin doing some donuts. Uh-huh. Hold still. And then bye-bye Dino Pop. Oh my yeah. goodness. I feel like I've learned so much here. <laughs> Suzanne, I don't know if you've been able to see the chat, but we got, we got people um, who are talking about from... Uh, the, dis the, the unofficial Desmos Discord here, and, and Discord is a word that I only learned, you know, in its internet-y sense like a month ago, but they're here. Um, they, they found out about you and um, you got a bunch of fans now and they're saying that they used to do right. this thing um, with minimum, they used to do uh, like this combination of min, max, and then combos of these different variables. I just added one to the, to the, uh, to the, the stream here and they're freaking out that they now have this like this median function just gets it yeah. done. So, so Dan, I want to show you one, one thing because we realized after, I'm just going to turn this image off for a second. So you'll notice that this is a pretty sharp curve, right? Not even a curve. It's just, it's just sharp, which means yeah. that as this, as this thing moves around, it's, it's kind of jerky. It just kind of like starts and bam, it stops. Okay. And then a lot of times we want to have kind of this sense that we're easing into something or easing out of it. So, uh, I have a few other curves that I want to show you. Um, the first one eases in and eases back out. Zoom okay. in. And we use this zoom pretty often. Uh, yeah, let me zoom in for this. Oh, over here? Both. Give them both. both. They deserve it. Let's do both. This is fantastic. OK, uh, so we've got that one. Sometimes we want things to come in really quickly and then slow to a stop. Sometimes we want things to just ease in and then just kind of zoom off screen or something like that. Uh, so we kind of shape the animation curve to our to what we want it to do, okay? But it's you'll notice that it's always going from zero to one, okay? And this was kind of like this aha moment for us as a graph team a year and a half or so ago. Just like it frees up so much brain space to think about the other parts of the animation when you're thinking of all of the parts moving from nothing to 100%. Um, yeah, so cool. That rocks. In fact, why don't I just do this? One time. I'm just gonna... Why don't? Why don't you? Get, get why rid of this you, why one. Why not? 
why would I, why would I not? I'm just going to kind of get rid of a couple of these things, turn the image on and use the one that's a little smoother. Okay. And we'll just, we'll just see how much nicer it looks. Oh yeah. Look at that. How it kind of like eases into a stop. Good grief. Um, okay. Okay. Love that. Too much fun, too much fun. But Dan, the thing is that this just animating on its own isn't so helpful uh, without being able to connect it to the other parts of the graph. Uh, let me just turn that dyno on again. Do we have it? What happened to my dyno? Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, what do you think? Should we add a button? Kind of connect it up just a little bit? Yeah, just show them how this how this works in the actual activity then. Like, look, so now like the, the, the graph, I just want to keep on working here, Suzanne, show them how it's done. But I just, while you work, I want to stress that the computation layer is super important to connect various aspects of the activity. Um, but the graph, as you folks have just seen, the graph is what contains so much of what you might associate with the delight and learning and engagement of a Desmos activity. Um, and I just honestly, like if you, if you get, don't get the Desmos curriculum this winter when it goes live, fine, but find yourself a digital math curriculum that cares enough about the student experience to use a smoothing function. I mean, get you a math curriculum that cares that much. I, mean, I, just want, I want that. I want that for all of you. Okay. So what Suzanne did right there to show them what, what you just did there. You, you named that button. Named name that it. button. Zoom mm -hmm. it in for us a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Dino button. And then in the computation layer for the graph, okay. pop that open. And that T naught, you just like say, hey, watch the time since press when the dino button rolls. One yep. line of computation layer code. Show them one more time. Yep. Okay. Press it. Press that, or sorry, uh, uh, preview it. Let's see, let's see what happens here. All right, and then that will that will trigger that entire animation that you just you folks just helped helped us all build. Or oh, that means Suzanne did whatever. Same difference. Give it up for Suzanne. Secrets of the graph team revealed. If you want her back on to share more secrets, or if you want to meet, meet any of the other graph team specialists doing this work, you better give it up in the chat right there. You better like. You better subscribe also. And I just want to say, Suzanne, thank you for coming on and betraying the code of confidence of the graph teamers. Thank you, folks, for going a little a little bit thank late you. for us here. And, um, <laughs> I got one person in the chat who was like, this is perfect. Uh, finally, I have an answer to the question, when will I ever use cubic functions? And the answer is when you're working for Desmos, making awesome math <laughs> curriculum. Or you're a math us. teacher or a drafting <laughs> specialist. Finally, we got that need for cubics. So uh, Suzanne, I wish for you and I wish for everyone who's joined us on Desmos Live a safe and happy Thanksgiving holiday if you're here in the States. I hope you folks uh, stay real safe with what's brewing out there. I hope uh, we all get our negative tests coming on back. And um, I'm so pumped. Some people in the chat were like, I'm so happy that I've got a, a week off uh, to play with the Desmos graphing calculator, the advanced styling, and uh, Suzanne, the knowledge you just dropped right here. So folks, I'm gonna, with that, all that, I'm gonna tell, tell them so long, Suzanne, and we'll sign on off. Bye everybody. See everybody.